Hey guys, it's Demi from Demi's Divine Designs, and today we're going to be making the Retreat Backpack from Emmeline Bags. This bag looks phenomenal. It has a protruding front pocket that brings it to an intermediate level pattern, so keep that in mind when deciding if this is a pattern that you would like to try. There is hardware in the bag that I haven't worked with before, so it was really cool learning how to implement that into this style of bag. Here's what the bag looks like. This is the first one that I made. It is a really good size, and this top is the hardware that is new. This pocket does protrude out, and depending on the type of fabric you use and the style that you use for covering up the raw edge, the, those two things are what push this pattern from a beginner pattern to an intermediate pattern, as well as the type of fabrics and interfacing that you use. For the, my first bag, I did a uh, fusible foam, which makes it really rugged and structured and makes it cushiony. For the bag that we're gonna be making today, we're gonna be using fusible fleece. So let's hop right into it. For the exterior of my bag, I'm going to be using this cotton lycra that I got from Wonderground Fabrics. The pattern does recommend that you have three fourths of a yard for this fabric. If you're gonna do the front pocket as a different fabric or different material, that measurement is going to be less. So keep that in mind when picking out your exteriors. For your lining, you are going to need a yard of your lining. I am using this quilt cotton that I got from Joann's. For the interfacing, you have your woven interfacing that's gonna be fused to your lining and your exterior, depending on the type of fabric you're using. I'm using SF 101, and the pattern recommends that you have four yards of this. So you need, that's what you need the most of. You always need the most interfacing. Anyway, for your uh, fusible fleece, or you can swap this out. I used a fusible foam for my first bag. Whatever is going to provide like that structure, make it like squishy, make it look nice, give it like some structure, but enough that it's still pliable. Whatever you're going to use for that, you're going to need a half a yard. Today, we're going to be using fusible fleece. And then for your bottom stabilizer portion, this is going to be your firm stabilizer. You don't need a lot of this, you just need a scrap piece that fits the measurements that it tells you in the pattern for that bottom stabilizer piece. And these are all of the main fabric and stabilizer components that you're gonna need for the bag. Here is all of the hardware that we're gonna be using for today's bag. Starting off, you need two metal bag frames. These can either be purchased from shops like Emmeline Bags, which is where you got the pattern, or you can make them on your own. If you would like to see how I made mine, that video is going to be exclusive for my Patreon subscribers. You are also going to need two rectangle rings and two adjustable sliders. The measurement of these rings and sliders does depend on the, the thickness of your webbing. We're using one inch wide webbing, so we're gonna do one inch wide sliders and rectangle rings. If you were to use one and a half inch wide, three quarter inch, make sure that you're getting your hardware to match. The pattern does recommend that you do one inch webbing and one inch hardware. For zippers, you are going to need five different zipper pools. Two if you are doing the dubber zipper on the top, one for your back zipper, one for your front pocket zipper, and one for your interior zipper. The pattern does recommend that for the interior zipper, you use a number three zipper. I only have number five, so number five. I didn't have that big of an issue when I did it on my first one. Just keep in mind that your zipper pulls need to be the same size as your zipper tape. I'm using two different zipper tapes. You can use one, you can use whatever works, but you're gonna need zipper tape. We're gonna need to be getting four different cuts of zippers. So make sure that you have enough zipper tape to account for all of the different zipper sections that we're gonna need. Double-sided tape is helpful in a few parts, so I highly recommend double-sided tape. Pins, I try to avoid pins at all costs, but there is one part of this pattern, which is putting the front pocket on, that pins are extremely helpful. So I highly recommend you have those. A small ruler, you can also do like a three by nine ruler. Just make sure you have a ruler that's close by. We're gonna be needing it a lot. Marking utensils. Today, I'm just gonna be using a char chalk pencil. Since all my fabric is dark, I'm using white. It'll be easy to see. I also have a seam ripper and stiletto handy. 
never know when you're going to use it, always good to have it. <laughs> a zipper jig, you can also use a fork, you can use your hands. I'm not very good with using the fork or the hands, so I have a zipper jig to help put my pools onto my zipper tape. You're also going to need your needles. Today I'm using uh, 110 by 18 needles. Your thread, I'm using Tex 45 weight from Wizardry Stitchery. I'm using this both in the top and the bobbin of my machine. You're also going to need your tag if that is what you are planning on using and on two pattern pieces. For your body piece, you're going to need two cuts of your exterior fabric, two cuts of your lining fabric, and two I have two cuts of my woven interfacing since I don't really interface my lining. If you're going to interface your lining as well, you're going to need four cuts of your interfacing. For your body stabilizer, this I'm doing the fusible fleece. If you are swapping this out for like fusible foam or like a stiffer interfacing, you're going to need two cuts of that with your zipper cut, as the pattern says, only on one of these since that's going to be for your back piece. Your other piece should not have that zipper cut into it. From your pouch pocket bottom, you're going to need one cut of your exterior one cut of your lining and two cuts of your woven interfacing since this is for the pocket that uh, extends off the front i like to make sure all of these pieces are stabilized to make it nice and structured for the pouch pocket top a you're going to need one cut of your exterior fabric and one cut of your fusible interfacing for your pouch pocket top b you're going to need one cut of your lining interfacing, and one cut of your fusible fleece. For the pieces that do not have pattern pieces, you're gonna need four cuts of your zipper tabs. This measurement is in the pattern. Two cuts of your top zipper tab closures. This one's for the pocket, this one is for the top zipper. You're also gonna need one exterior zipper pocket facing and one lining zipper pocket facing. You can use the exterior fabric for this or the lining fabric or just a scrap fabric, whatever you choose. I just like to do the exterior since it blends in with the exterior better. For the lining one, I could have done the lining and it would have blended in, but you do whatever floats for you. And then for your lining, you're going to need two cuts for your exterior zipper pocket, one cut for your lining zipper pocket, and one cut for your lining slip pocket. And then if you choose to interface any of these, you're also gonna need your interfacing cuts as well. You also need your bottom stabilizer cut. And then I have of my exterior fabric cut to be my binding for the edges of the pocket since those are not getting sewn in for the exterior. For your zippers, you're going to need your four cuts of zippers one for your main top zipper, one for your back zipper, one for your front zipper, and one for the interior zipper pocket. All of these measurements are in the pattern. For your webbing, you're going to need two for your rectangle ring holders. I am doing one handle. The pattern does recommend two. I just don't like having the extra handle in the front. It's not my stylistic preference. You do what you want to do. The pattern does recommend that there are two of these. And then two cuts for your straps. The pattern has you starting by prepping your top closure zipper tabs. And this is the one that you're going to have the two cuts of. Take one cut of your zipper tabs, flip it wrong side up. Now, there are two ways that you can prep this. You can use double-sided tape or you can just use an iron. I'm going to use double-sided tape because I have a double-sided tape addiction. So. For the first, first thing it has you doing is it's going to have you fold down the shorter edges a quarter of an inch. And I just take a quarter inch double sided tape. And this is tape that I can sew through. It doesn't gum up my needle, so I don't worry about it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to line the tape right along the top edge of the tab, like so. And we're going to do the same on the bottom, like that. And then we're just going to fold these edges down. So peel off your tape and just fold it right along your edge. 
like so. Same on the other side. And then for the long edges, the pattern wants you to fold down a half inch. So take half inch double-sided tape. Same thing. Go right along the edge on both sides. Peel off the tape and fold that down. What this is doing is essentially closing in all of the raw edges for when we sew this onto the zipper. Like so. And now the pattern does give you measurements as to what this should measure. So double check your measurements. Once you have your tab at the measurement that it says in the pattern, you're going to fold in half and clip, which is going to be your zipper tab clip. And then you're gonna repeat this process on with your second zipper tab. Once you have both of these prepped, you're gonna take your 23 inch zipper. And that is the one that has two zipper pulls if that's what you are choosing. And we are going to stitch, slide these onto the edge of our zipper tape. It should be the same size, but it looks like mine is a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to open up these folds a little bit more to make sure that it is the same size as my zipper tape. Then once you have your tab the same size as your zipper tape, you're going to take that, fold that in half, casing the zipper tape into your zipper tab making sure your zipper tape goes all the way to the edge. Clip that into place and do the same on the other side, making sure that the zipper tab is the same width as your zipper tape. And then make sure that your zipper tape goes all the way in to your zipper tab. Fold that clip into place and we are going to head over to the sewing machine and just encase the zipper in the tab, stitching along all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that all set, your zipper tabs are gonna look like this, where they are on the edge of your main zipper, secured down onto both sides. We're gonna set this aside for now, and we're gonna grab our front pocket zipper. So grab whatever zipper is going to be for your front pocket and your four zipper tabs. The first thing that the pattern has you do is trim this zipper down from what it originally tells you in the cut list. So you're going to cut that down and make sure anytime you cut down zipper tape, you melt the edges. Because see how mine's starting to fray there a bit? We're going to take a lighter and I fight with the lighter and just melt down the edge. What that's going to do is that's going to secure this webbing and keep it from fraying over time, which I have had happen many times. Once you have this set, what you're going to do is you're going to take your zipper tabs, grab one of them, and lay that right side down on top of your zipper tape. My tape is a little bit larger. It's not going to be a big deal. Then you're going to take a clip, clip that into place, do the same on the other side. Grab a clip, zipper tab, lay that on top of the zipper tape with the right sides together. Clip that into place, flip your tape over, take your remaining ones and lay that right side down, sandwiching your zipper in between the two zipper tabs. Like smoosh and like moosh. The pattern does have you do the bottom zipper tab first and then do the top one. For me, it doesn't matter which way you do it. You're going to get the same result. Then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch down both short edges. We're going to fold both tabs out and then we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the fold. You'll see what I mean at the sewing machine. Once that's all set, your zipper is going to look like this, where you have your zipper tab on both sides, 
and on the bottom side, and those are folded up towards each other with your zipper in the center. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna measure and make sure that your zipper plus the tabs is the length that it tells you in the pattern. Mine is about a quarter inch too big, so I'm gonna trim an eighth inch off of each of the zipper ends. And I'm just gonna ride my scissor along the edge, just clipping a tiny bit. I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then double check the measurement again. Which should be good. Once you've double checked and make sure that your zipper is now the correct size that it's supposed to be, we are gonna set this aside and we are gonna grab our pocket top A making sure that we interfaced, we fused our interfacing onto the bottom, and we are going to transfer these lines over onto the pattern piece. I like to just take my chalk marker and start the lines, transferring it from the pattern piece, move that to the side, grab a ruler, and just draw out those lines going across. like that and repeat for the other two lines. Once you have those lines transferred, it's going to look like this. And what we're gonna do next is we are gonna take the middle line, which is fold line B, and we are gonna fold this wrong sides together along that line. So I like to just flip the entire piece over and fold right along that line and clip this into place. So grab your clippies and clip. Once that is clipped like this, you're gonna notice that the two lines should be right on top of each other on the front and on the back, like so. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch along this line and along the folded edge. Add an eighth of an inch seam allowance on the folded edge and then straight on the line for your drawn line. Once this is stitched, here's what you have. We have our stitch line A and C stitched since those were right on top of each other and our folded edge is stitched as well. What that does is when we open the bottom, pushing the flap up, this section is the same size as our part B. So we can lay it on top to double check. You may have to fight with it a little bit because that fold likes to make it pucker. And it is the same size. So that's perfect. For right now, move part A out of your way. Don't make it too far, we're gonna need that. So have part B, your zipper, and the healthy stashes clips or double-sided tape, whichever way works for you on this. Working with part B, you're gonna make sure that the clips are facing away from you and the fabric is right side up. Then you are going to take your zipper, also right side up, and we are gonna line that along this bottom edge and we are gonna clip that into place. Like that. Once that is clipped, we are then going to take our part A, flip this right side down and take the bottom edge, keeping the flap out of your way. We're gonna take this bottom edge here and we're gonna clip that into place sandwiching the zipper inside. You can also do this with double-sided tape if that is something that you would like to do. And make sure that you're not clipping this top flap, kind of just fold that out of the way. That's not important right now. Like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch along this edge at a 3 8 seam allowance, pretty much riding your zipper foot right along the edge of your zipper teeth. Once you have that set, it's going to look like this where your flap is gonna be over and your top and bottom panels all match. 
making sure your zipper can open and close correctly. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our top B panel and clip that to our top A panel, lining up your corners and clipping along that top edge. Once you have your top clipped, it is going to look like this. Give your zipper a nice tug, pulling those seams flat by the zipper. Then bend your flap upwards and clip that to the side just to keep it out of the way for the next step because it could get all bunched up and we don't want that. So just bend your flap up and clip that into place. Once you have your flap clipped up to the top, we're going to grab our bottom sections for both exterior and lining, but we're going to work with the lining first. So move your exterior and the pattern piece to the side. Then we're going to take the lining and lay that with the cutouts towards the top. And we are going to take our zipper piece all together and lay that wrong side together on that straight bottom edge, lining that up, and we are going to clip that into place. Once you have that clipped, you are good to grab your exterior and lay that right side down over top of your lining zipper sandwich. And then we're going to join the exterior into the clips, sandwiching the zipper in between the exterior and the lining. Now that that is all clipped into place, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch this down at a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, riding our presser foot right along our zipper teeth. Once you have that complete, where you stitch the bottom exterior and the bottom lining onto the zipper panel that had our top portion, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same process as we did for the bottom where we're going to connect the lining and the exterior so flip your lining out like so and your exterior and what we're going to do is we're just going to clip to hold this into place for the moment line up your edges and clip along same on the sides Okay, and now what we're going to do is we are going to run back over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along this seam here and this seam here. At an eighth of an inch seam allowance, pretty much just riding our presser foot right along that fold that we created from the seam. Once we have this set, what we're going to do is we're going to box up these corners. So starting with the bottom, take your clips off of the straight area and take your exterior and fold this corner right sides together. You might have to take, honestly, just take them all off of the bottom. Don't need them. Fold that right side together like so. Lining up edge to edge and clip here. Do the same on the other corner. Take it, fold right side together, lining up edge to edge, and clip into place. And now we're going to do the same for the lining, but we're going to go right sides together. Line that up edge to edge, and clip into place. Same on the other lining corner, right sides together, everything should line up really well and clip that into place. Like so, and I'm going to do the same for the top, so we're going to prep that by taking this flap and folding that down. And we are going to clip that into place over the zipper, keeping it out of the way for our corners. So same on the other side. Take that, fold it down, clip into place. And then we're gonna box the corners the same way we did for the lining. 
So take off your clips, minus those two, keep those two there. Take your exterior. Now this is gonna be a bit more difficult because you do have this flap that's gonna be fighting you. So don't be afraid to like fight with it. It's okay, it's fabric. You're not gonna hurt its feelings, it'll be fine. Fight with it, get the edges to line up. Make sure your corner is nice and straight here. And then we're gonna clip that into place. Same way we did for the bottom. Make sure you don't do that. Clip. Same on the other side. Right sides together. Fight with the fabric if needed. And clip. And then the lining. Flip that right sides together and this is where it's like gonna start fighting you you could do this one at a time do the bottom and then come back and do the top that might be easier i just like to minimize my camera switches so like that and then last corner poke bend Line everything up and clip. That moved. There we go. And clip. So it's going to look like this. Looks very fun. What we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew each of these edges at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, now this looks a little funny and weird. This is how it should look. What we're going to do now is we are going to flip the exterior over the lining, line all of the edges up. So start down at the bottom, take your exterior, poke it out. And then I like to take my seam, push my lining seam going up, my exterior seam going down. And that is where I like to start when clipping these edges together. So start a clip there, jump over to the other side. Same thing, I push my exterior outward, bend my seam down, Take my lining seam, push that up, line those, nesting those seams together, and clip there. Then I'm just gonna clip along this bottom edge, making sure all of the raw edges are lined up. And then we're going to repeat the process on the top where we're going to take our exterior, poke it out. And do the same for the exterior where we're going to poke that out, poke that edge out, make sure it's nice and crisp. Fold the seam on this one wants to go down. So we'll do that. We'll push that seam down and push the lining seam up. Line that up. And clip. Same on the other side. Poke that seam down, lining seam up, line those like that, clip that into place, and then we're going to clip along this edge, lining up those raw edges as well. Once you have that clipped, all of your edges should line up if you didn't accidentally roll them while clipping, like a so. And your pocket is starting to have some nice form. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we are gonna baste stitch these together, closing the opening and kind of like sealing these. And we're gonna do that at an eighth of an inch seam allowance around this entire clipped edge.
Once we have all of the edges seamed, you can either zigzag stitch this or what we're going to do today is bind this. I don't have a zigzag stitch, so binding it is. I am going to fold my strip in half. And fold my strip in half and clip it along the edge like so. So I have my binding and then my bag. And I'm going to clip along this edge like so, all the way around, just folding my strip in half. I wish I had used waterproof canvas or something that doesn't fray to make this easier. Again, I am not somebody who likes binding, but all the patterns I've been doing lately all involve binding. <laughs> Talk about close, guys. Look at that. Anywho, all right. Once we get to this section, I am going to slide that under that one. Loop like a so. So it's kind of encasing that in there. Clip. Then we're going to head over to the machine and we are going to stitch this into place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, securing the raw edges together. Once that is set, we have the binding secured all the way around. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, our binding, fold that up, loop that around just to cover the stitches like that. So what that's doing is covering all raw edges and clip that into place all the way around. Once you have that completely clipped, you're going to see that all of your edges are encased in the binding. And what we're going to do is head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along the folded edge at just at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just riding your uh, presser foot right along the edge. Once you have the binding sewn on, it is going to look like this, where your edges are all covered. You have your bound edges on the end, and you have your zipper completely functional, like hello. So for right now, we're going to sit this to the side. Don't get rid of it. We're going to need it. And next, you're going to grab your front panel. When grabbing your front panel, you want to make sure that once the fusible fleece is on, it is not the one with the hole for the zipper. That's the back panel. We want the one without the zipper. So flip your panel and have it oriented with the cutouts towards you and the top that way. Then you're going to measure up the measurement that it tells you in the pattern. So we're going to line our ruler up and we're going to draw a line the length that it tells you in the pattern. I'm just going to draw like this and then I will adjust how it goes when we get here. This is going to be the bottom of our pocket when we put that on. This is the only step that I did struggle with, which could just be because I like things to look perfect and I don't know how many times I tried, I could not get it perfect. We're going to try to get it perfect on this one. Then you're going to measure over the measurement that it tells you and mark that as well. And then we're going to draw a line going this way. Same on this side. Do your measurement that it tells you in the pattern. And draw. Pew, pew, pew. And that creates the line that we're going to use to center our pocket. And now this is where your pins are going to come in handy. Because we're going to line up the pockets along that bottom line. And then we're going to pin this into place. This is where I struggled. So, you know, just get it on there. It'll be fine. <laughs> Center your pocket. And pin. Double-sided tape may be helpful 
on this section, when I tried my double-sided tape, it just kept moving on me. So I gave up. <laughs> Poke out your corners and then clip along the side. Well, pin, pin the side. We're not clipping because there's nothing to clip to, but we can pin. Like a peel. And same on the other side. Get that corner and line that up with your line. And pin. And now see, mine's doing that thing again, but I think that'll work once I get there. Yeah, we should be good. I hope. If not, it's going to be another thing where I seam rip this like six times. It'll be fine. And then we're going to straighten out the top and we're going to do the same. Just pull on the edges and it should just kind of like pop into place. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but once you tug on that, it should do what we need it to. Now, if you just zigzag stitch, there are different in zigzag stitch instead of binding. There are different instructions as to how to attach that pocket, which involves you folding the edge under. Since we bound, we are just going to do it this way. Make sure everything stays in line on that edge. And I'm going to try to throw in a pin here. Not sure how well it's going to work because my zipper's right there. But we attempt because I'm a sucker for punishment. Ooh, I got it. Okay. And that keeps that in line there. Gonna flip that over and do the same on the other side. And what we're doing is we're trying to keep this in line with the line that we drew. If you need to do more pins, do more pins. I don't think you can over pin, maybe. Uh. Once you have everything pinned and it looks straight, it looks even to the best that it can because I know it's all like bundled up. We're going to head over to the seam allowance and we are going to stitch on the outer side at an eighth of an inch of the binding, holding this into place. All right, now that we have that set, I do have to say for binding, I do not suggest using cotton lycra because I am getting heat, but thankfully cotton lycra does hide it very well. But I would suggest don't use cotton lycra for the binding. Anywho, once this is done, we are good to remove our, our pins, and technically the pocket is done. This is the part in the pattern that makes this an intermediate level bag minus using the bag um, frames. But this is definitely, I would say, the most challenging part of the pattern. And honestly, we got through it pretty quick. So hey, hey, hey. And there we go. We are good to puff up this pocket. And we are all set. We can check, make sure it works. You need to puff it out from the inside to get like those edges. I wonder if it would be cool to like do a stitch on there, but that just might make it annoying. Same up here. And then I like this flap, how it does hold under the zipper, like it goes over the zipper, keeping that all nice. But there we go, there's that pocket. And before we move on to the next step, I like to put my bag tag on this front panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark our center on the top. I do that by folding in half, which this honestly might be easier if you do it before you put on the pocket, but I can't go back in time now, can I? <laughs> Find your center and then just do a little snip in that, cor in that top, like a very tiny little wapow. So tiny. And then that's going to mark our center point. Then we're going to take a ruler and I like to go four inches down from my center. That's not four. That's four. Ha ha ha. 
four inches down from my center, and that's how we're gonna put our bag tag on. I'm gonna put some double-sided tape on the back of my tag just to help hold that in place while I take it over to the sewing machine. So, wapow. And I get my bag tags from Heartwood and Hyde. I will link her Facebook in the description. Her tags are amazing, and honestly, she is so good to work with. She helped me come up with so many different things. She's amazing. I love her. Anywho, we're going to line that up and line the tag up like that. And then you'll see that the tag is centered with your pocket. And then we are going to top, we're going to top stitch around the edge at, I like to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just however you like to secure your tags, go ahead and secure your tag. Once you have your tag stitched on, there is an additional way to do this pocket, which might be easier if you struggled like I did putting this pocket on. And that way is how they explain it into the pattern, where you're going to start sewing right below the zipper, go down around the bottom, up, stopping again right below the zipper, then puffing the pocket out, straightening the top section, and then stitching that down, going from zipper to zipper. That'll help get a more square pocket, and I kind of wish I did that, but we're not going to undo this, so we're just going to roll with it. Now we're going to move on to preparing the back of the exterior. For working on the back section, we're going to need our back exterior piece. This is the one that has the cutout and the fusible fleece for the zipper. You need one of your exterior pocket pieces. This is the one that has another piece that's cut the exact same size. You're going to need your longer zipper facing, your zipper, a ruler, and a marking tool. First thing we're going to do is work on our zipper facing. So move everything else out of the way for right now. We will come back to that in a moment. Once you have your zipper facing, what we're going to do is we're going to mark our centers. So fold your zipper facing in half like a hamburger. And then we're just going to do tiny little notches in the corner. And I mean like a tiny, tiny little notch. Very small. We want to make sure that we don't completely like cut into our piece. And once that opens, you'll see we have these little indents. That's what we're going to use to help our center. For this section, we're going to be marking out a rectangle that's going to be for our zipper placement and our stitch line. The pattern does explain how to do this, but I'll walk you through it really quick. You're going to take your facing with the wrong side up, take your ruler, line it up on your center an inch up from the, lar the long edge, like so, and draw a line. I am going to use my whole ruler since it is around the size that it does tell you in the pattern. And then you'll have this. From here, you're going to measure up a half inch from that line that you just drew, again, keeping everything centered, and draw that line. I'm gonna box those corners too, like a so. And there is our box that we are going to use for our zipper placement. You can also, at this point, draw a center line that will help when we have to cut into the zipper after we stitch it. Stopping an, a half inch from the edge on both sides. And then once you have that, I just like to draw diagonals going from the center line to those corners. It doesn't have to be pretty, it's just gonna get cut out anyway, like that. Now what we're going to do is grab our exterior main panel. And once you have your exterior main panel, you can do one of two ways to lay this zipper facing on top. You can feel for your zipper cutout that we have in our fusible fleece, or you can measure down what it tells you in the pattern. I am just going to feel for it and line it up that way. So start there. Mm 
like that. So what this is doing is keeping your zipper, like your stitch line that you're going to make here and your zipper tape without that bulk from the interfacing in the seam. So if you just feel, you can feel where it has to go, or you can measure down what it tells you in the pattern. Once you have that centered, we can pin this into place, or you can just hold on and just drag it over to your sewing machine and hope it doesn't move. I'm just gonna hold on for dear life, <laughs> since I'm only going right over there. So I'm just gonna hold on for dear life, and we are gonna stitch along the outer rectangle that we created. I'll show you what that is at the sewing machine. Once you have that set, it is going to look something like this. Your box may look much better than mine. I don't suggest using cotton lycra for this step because stretchy equals pleats and crooked seams. Just keep that in mind when prepping your pieces. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut along that center line and those diagonal lines, allowing us to turn this like through the hole. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold or find your center cut on the line and we're cutting both through the zipper facing and the exterior fabric. So I like to just fold mine in half and cut like that, starting it. There are other ways to start it where you could like use a seam ripper and seam rip the line. This just works for me. You do whatever works for you. So we're just gonna cut along that center line. And now here for these diagonals, you want to cut close to your stitching, but you do not want to cut through it. This is one of those I like to actually use my other scissors, these guys, because of that nice point. And we're going to do that. And again, we're going through both the exterior and the zipper facing. So once you give yourself anxiety, thinking you're going to cut through those stitches, that's how you know you're close enough. like that like that was close but my stitches are still intact we're gonna do the same on the other side getting really close to those zipper those stitches give yourself like palpitations like oh my gosh but you'll be fine like that and then we're gonna do the same on the other side i'm gonna cut straight Get to that diagonal. Really close. And the other side. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is turn the zipper facing through that hole that we just created. So flip this to the back and just pull your zipper facing through. Now holding this in place, you can do three things if you would like. You could A, use double-sided tape, which I'm going to be doing. B, you could iron this into place if you're using like a water resistance or waterproof canvas, that would go perfect. Or you can pin this into place. I'm going to double sided tape it because again, I have an addiction with this thing. And I'm just going to run the double sided tape on the edge of my zipper facing since I know I'm not going to be stitching there, even though this tape, my machine does tend to stitch through pretty well. Not saying all machines will, but mine survives. Just go like that. And since this is going on fusible fleece, I am not sure how well this is going to stick. So we're going to find out. And what we're doing is we're going to try to roll this back so we barely see the exterior peeking through. And this isn't like a do or die type seam. It's you make it look good and you'll be fine. Ooh, that is sticking really well. Okay. 
double-sided tape sticks really well to the fusible fleece. Same on the other side. Just run your double-sided tape right along the edge. Peel it up. And roll this seam. And again, I like to roll it so I can see a little bit of my exterior peeking through. Other people like to do it where the lining is what peeks through on the exterior side. Whatever works for you. Like so, and now my box is a little weird, but it's fine. You could also tape this down if you would like to. I think I'm going to, but I'm not gonna go like insane with the taping. Just a tiny little piece. All right, like that. So once you have that all prepped, when you flip it to the back, you're gonna see, ooh, you have this nice little opening. And this is where our zipper is gonna go. Grab your zipper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna line the far edges of my zipper with double-sided tape. This is gonna help hold it into place. The pattern does give you another way to do this zipper part. Every time I do it the way that it's explained in the pattern, I have a tendency to stitch my zipper pocket closed. So I'm going to do it a different way. If you like the way that they explain it in the pattern, go ahead and do it. I am too afraid to close up the zipper, so I'm not. So double-sided tape on both sides of the zipper. I'm going to peel the one side off for right now. And I'm doing this right along the edge, so it's not going to be like all crazy. And I like to have my zipper when closed go to the left. So line your zipper up. And how I line it up, I like to just feel where the zipper tape is ending. And then stick it down, centering my coils inside of that opening we just made, like that. So here's the pool, and it is centered. Once you get that, then we're going to peel the tape from the top. and stitch that. And then once you have this set, we're gonna run over to the sewing machine and we are just gonna stitch right along the edge of our box opening at an eighth of an inch, securing the zipper into place. All right, once you have that set, your zipper is completely attached. And now what we're gonna do is add on the pocket pieces. So I'm going to flip this right side over, right side down, and I'm going to grab my first pocket piece. What I'm going to do with that is I am going to put this wrong sides together with the pocket piece going towards the top, lining that up with the zipper facing. Since I did double side tape my zipper facing down, I am going to pull that up. and I'm gonna clip my pocket piece to my zipper facing. All right, once we have that clipped, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and stitch along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, quarter to three eighths. Okay, once you have that set, your zipper pocket is going to be attached to your zipper facing. And if you have the double-sided tape, you can reposition your zipper facing back on there. Pull your pocket down. Take your second pocket, lay that right side down on top of your zipper facing, lining that up with the raw edge up here and your raw edges on your other zipper pocket piece. And we're going to clip along that edge as well. Pulling up your zipper facing if you use a if you use double sided tape. All 
All right, and then we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and stitch along this raw edge, connecting the zipper pocket to the zipper facing only at a 3 8 inch seam allowance or quarter inch, depending on what you wanna do, doesn't make a difference. Go ahead and stitch that in place. Okay, once you have that stitched on, mine did not stitch the prettiest, but it's fine. It's just a pocket, nobody's gonna notice. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna line up our edges of our zipper pockets, and we are gonna clip into place along these raw edges. Same on the other side. Okay. And now before we head to the sewing machine, see how we have all this extra here? I am just gonna cut that off. Not necessary, you can leave it. I just don't like this much excess. So I'm just going through and trimming this down. Okay, once that's trimmed, I'm gonna do two clips on the bottom since that is all I'm gonna stitch when we head over to the machine because we need to leave this pocket open because this is one of the pockets that we're going to use when we are turning everything right side out and in it and inserting our stabilizer on the bottom. So once you have the bottom trimmed and your clips, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down this edge up to this corner, stopping here, starting here, going across, up the corner, and up to the top, making sure you are back stitching really heavy at these two points, since that's gonna have most of the stretch when we turn it right side out. Once you have that all set, you will have a completely working pocket minus like the hole on the bottom. How I like to stitch that one is I like to lay my fabric with the exterior up and then just bend the exterior out of my way to get to the lining pockets. Now we're gonna move on to attaching the handles and the strap connectors. Okay, for attaching your handles, you can decide if you are gonna do a straight handle or if you're gonna do a folded handle folding the middle section and stitching this down. For this bag, I'm going to do just the plain regular handle. I'm not gonna fold it since I do have my uh, webbing laminated. It's a little thick and don't wanna fight with it. So for your uh, placement of the handles, you can do two different ways to map out the handles. You can use the pattern piece where and have everything line up where it's indicated on the pattern, or you can use the measurements that they tell you in the pattern to draw your line and center everything that way, which I think is what we're gonna do. The first thing that we have to do is find our center at the top of our main panel. And we're gonna do that the same way we've been doing for everything where we fold it in half and do a tiny little cut on the center. Tiny little snippy snip like that and there is our center point so we're going to use that to measure down the measurement that it tells you in the pattern find your center measure that down so measure down the measurement that it tells you in the pattern and you're going to draw a six inch line centering it with your center line so i have my center marked my center lined up fighting with the ruler to keep it straight and just drawing to the six inch line. Like so. Then what we're gonna do is take some double-sided tape. I like to do this to hold down my webbing. Do a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of each short edge of your webbing. Like so. And we're gonna start with the handle. First thing you're gonna do is peel off the tape and line up the handle with the edge of your six inch marking like that. So my six inch line goes here, stop that. Keep this straight as we flip this and we're gonna put that on the other edge of our six inch um, marking and line that up. So now we have our handle. 
Next thing we're going to do is take one of our straps, which is the long cut of webbing, put double-sided tape on the one side of the webbing, not the other side. Peel that up. We're going to put this directly next to our handle, like that keeping this straight going up and away. We're gonna do the same with our other strap. Double-sided tape, small piece. Does anybody else have this much trouble with their double-sided tape or is mine just mean? Okay, and same thing, line that up with your other handle piece. So what you can do now is you can base these into place or you can just prep your uh, covering for this section. I am just going to grab my casing and work on that. For my casing, I do cut it a quarter inch longer than it recommends in the pattern. And what we're going to do is center that. Not center it. We're going to line it up with our um, handles like this. And I'm going to do some double sided tape just right along the center. For whatever piece you're for whatever fabric you're using for this um, handle cover, you want to make sure that it's either webbing or some type of non-fraying fabric. I'm going to use vinyl today. On my last one, I did use webbing. It's whatever works for you. This is just going to cover up the edges of your hand, your webbings. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine, stitch along the four edges. And if you want to, you can do boxes for each section of webbing. I'm probably gonna do that just to help secure this into place, giving it nice and sturdy structure. Once that's done, it should look like this. If you were particular in making sure that your X's look perfect, you can go through and like measure and draw them out, whatever floats your boat. Since I did this all as one piece and I did the X over both, I am not gonna be putting on the cover tabs for the two handles. And we're just gonna move on to the next step, which is going to be attaching the rectangle rings onto the back. So grab your two rectangle connector pieces and your two rectangle rings. What we're gonna do is slide our rectangle rings onto our connectors like so, and clip them into place. Same for the other one, and clip. And I'm just gonna take this over to the sewing machine and baste these two connectors in place holding the rectangle rings. Once you have those basted, I just did a quarter inch seam allowance just going across here, back stitching. It's not necessary, the pattern doesn't have you do that. I just like to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Once that's set, you're gonna grab your ruler and we're gonna mark a four by four inch square and just do a little mark right where that ends. So I'm gonna go like this and like that. So right there is where it ends and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. This ruler, I only like to do this way because then I can see. Right by Maleficent's crown. Okay, and this is where we are going to have our markings for our tabs to go on, as well as two of our coverings. Grab those. We're going to use double-sided tape again just to secure everything in spot. Since I'm using vinyl and um, webbing, pinning is going to be a little difficult for me, so I'm not even going to bother. Just going to double sided tape it. And peel off your tape. Fight with the tape. And since the covering has to be right in that section, we are going to slide that um webbing about in three we want kind of want it to be centered on the bag on the um the 
covering. So just go like that and then line your covering up with your marking that you made just to show that it's centered and you're good to go. And I'm going to double side tape that as well. Just to tape that into place. Lining that up where our four inch square ended, which for me is right on the top of Maleficent's horns. So smoosh like that. So you see that the webbing goes down to a little over halfway in the covering and it has ample uh, room on each side. We're going to do the same for the other one. The pattern also gives you measurements if you want to have it like exact. So you know how much this exactly needs to come up or where this exactly needs to lay. You could do it that way. I like to live dangerously and just eyeball it. it tends to work. So that's what I'm going to go with. And once you have these to your liking, we're then going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this into place doing a quarter inch, eighth inch to a quarter inch around the outside. And I'm going to do the X stitch as well, securing these in place. If you have rivets, anytime we're doing these X's, you can just rivet those into place. Once you have those set, now we are good to create our backpack straps, making that secure and ready to go. I did notice that since my webbing is not double sided like it was on the first bag, when I put the straps on the top, I should have had them flipped. So make sure that when you are attaching your straps that you have your right side of your strap facing down on your exterior. So when it folds over, you're not seeing like this black part like I am. It's still going to look good. Not worried about it. But now we're going to go ahead and make the back pack straps. To so take your first uh, adjustable slider and slide that onto your handle, going up the one end, down the other end, making sure that your strap is like completely straight. You don't have any twists or bends or anything in it. Once you get that on, what we're going to do is take our strap, slide that on. Again, making sure that there are no twists, slide that in your rectangle ring, bring that back up to the slider. You may have to pull that out. Go up the slider with this, uh, the middle part here, pull that up, loop it, and bring it back under like that. So it's going to look weird. It does come together really strange, but it's fine. <laughs> and I like to have about an inch, inch and a half excess on that bottom. And then I'm going to clip that into place. So it looks like this. If you put your handle on correctly, your pretty side will be facing out. I don't think it makes that big of a difference with this. It's still pretty. I'm not worried about it. We're going to repeat the same on the other side. Take your slider, keeping your handle straight, put your slider on, going up the one end, moving the middle bar, going down the other end, load your handle into your rectangle ring. And again, keeping this straight, I'm going to slide that up a little bit, pull your strap out, take your ungone end, go up through the bottom, pull up, go out through the top, and make sure you have enough excess. Clip into place. Now for this, you have two ways of connecting this. You could either bring it to the sewing machine and stitch that on, or you can do a rivet press. Today, I am going to stitch that. So we're going to head over the sewing machine and we are going to stitch a box and an X connecting the raw edge to your other part of the strap, making this secure and ready to go. Oh, 
Okay, and once you have that stitched, your straps are fully functional. I suggest that you make your adjustable strap as small as you can. Just for the next couple steps, it helps keep it out of the way. So I would make it as small as you can on both sides. And then you are good with your back panel. We are all set to move this to the side and start working on the lining. The lining portion is pretty quick, so we got this. We got it halfway there. All right, make sure you have your lining pocket piece. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it lengthwise like a hot dog, -na 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 -na, like a show. And we are gonna clip along these three raw edges making sure we leave a gap up at the top to turn this right side out. All right, once you have that clipped and ready to go, we're gonna start at one edge, go up, do the corner, back stitch heavily at one end, jump over to the other, back stitch heavily, go around, back down. And we're doing that at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that stitch, we're going to clip off the edges to help push out those corners for when we turn this right side out and just clip close to your stitches, but not going through. Same on this corner, kind of just yeet. And then I like to go like that to give it some more um, relief to make it turn easier. And then mine decided to go like that. Same on the other side. And then what we're gonna do next is turn this right side out through that hole. You can use a turning tool for this. You can use your finger, just get in there, pop out these corners. I like to use my finger. I got small hands, so we good. Same thing, pop out those corners. And now here you can take this and press if you would like to. I am not going to. I'm just gonna fold in these edges just by sticking my finger in that hole and tugging, which is gonna line up those edges, folding the raw edges in. And I'm gonna clip this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to the sewing machine and we are gonna top stitch along this entire edge, creating a nice crisp edge and closing that hole. All right, perfect. Once you have that done, your hole is going to be closed up and now we are good to mark our slip pocket. Now there is no right or wrong way to mark your pockets. It is just down to your preference or you could just follow what it says in the pattern, which is what I'm going to do. So we are gonna take our first side, we're gonna go from the left, and we are gonna measure one and a half inches in from the left and do a mark there. Like a show. And then we're gonna go from the right and we're gonna measure in about four inches and do a mark there. Fixing that, like so. And there is the markings for your pockets. You could do more markings of these. If you want more pen slots, add more pen slots. If you don't like this big gap, don't worry about it. You mark your slip pocket for what you're gonna use this for. If you're following the pattern, this is what that suggests. Now we're gonna grab our first lining piece. Once you have your first lining piece, we're gonna mark our center on the bottom just by folding in half and doing a little notch like we've done on the other pieces before. And this is a tiny, not even eighth of an inch notch, just like sneep, just so we can see where our center is. Like that. And then to center on the pocket, we are gonna measure up it says five inches in the pattern. I did not like how low that was on 
my bag for the first one. So I'm actually going to measure up seven inches from the bottom, lining that up with my center. And I'm going to use that to take my pocket and place that into place. If you like how it looks, if you like it lower on your bag, by all means, do what it says in the pattern. I'm not a huge fan of that, so I'm going up two more inches. All right, so once we have that, double check and make sure that it's centered. I would just like to measure the size. And mine is not. So we're gonna kick this guy over some. Perfect. Then you could pin this into place if you would like. I'm just going to hold on for dear life and hope it doesn't move. So we're going to stitch down the one edge, go across to our first marking, going to go up the marking about an eighth of an inch away from that marking, go across, go down an eighth of an inch from the line, go across, up an eighth, over, down an eighth, over, up. That'll make more sense at the sewing machine. <laughs> All right, perfect. Once that's done, you have your slip pocket completely attached. You have the one pocket, second pocket, and your little pen pocket. Now we're going to put this to the side, grab our second lining piece, our final zipper, and our final zipper pocket piece. All right, once we have all of those, make sure that you have your zipper facing and we are going to prep our zipper facing the same way that we prepped our previous zipper facing. So we are going to mark our center. And this is going to be fun because I got the cotton liker again. So ha <laughs> ha stretchy time. We're going to measure up an inch. from our center and mark our seven inch box, seven inch line. I'm gonna create a seven inch box like that. This one has you measure up three eighths of an inch. In the pattern, I'm gonna go up a half of an inch since I am not using a number three zipper, I'm using a number five. You measure depending on what zipper you are using. So I'm going to measure up a half of an inch since I'm using a number five and again, draw another seven inch line. And I'm going to box those like I did on the previous one. And then we're going to mark our centers. Since I did a half of an inch, I'm measuring up a quarter of an inch from the bottom line, drawing a center line, stopping a half inch from the edge and drawing my corner diagonals to meet that center on both sides. Like so. Once you have your pocket paste facing set, move that to the side, grab your main lining panel, and we're gonna mark our center on the top folding in half and doing a notch like we've been doing. All right, once you get that lined up, do a tiny little sneaky peep. And we are going to use that to center our zipper panel, zipper facing on our lining. Once you have your center marks, you're going to take your zipper facing panel and have the right sides together with your lining. You're gonna measure down from the top center like it tells you in the pattern and make sure that the top of your rectangle that you drew is the measurement that it tells you in the pattern. You're not doing the zipper facing to that measurement, you're doing the box that you drew to that measurement. So, so close, got to go down. Okay, 
perfect. And once you have that set, you can either pin this in place, double side tape, or whatever you need to. I am not going to double side tape this time. I'm just going to hold it in place and go stitch around the outside of that box like we did for the exterior zipper pocket. All right, once you have that set, it is going to look like this. And we're going to repeat the same process that we did on the exterior for the lining. We're going to cut along the center line and on these diagonals, getting really close to our stitching, but not enough that we cut through it. All right, once you have that set, we're going to turn this right side, turn this through the hole like we did on the exterior. But this time I am not going to double side tape it because that just caused a lot of peeling up that I had to do on the front. So just going to fight with that. Pull through. I'm actually just going to clip this edge. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Roll my edge so I see a little bit of the lining. And I'm going to clip. Is this the most effective way to do this? No. Am I doing it? Yes. Slide. Same on the other side. Slide. And then we're going to do the same on the top. I'm going to flip. It's easier for me to work with that way. Roll it so I see a tiny bit of that lining peeking through and clip now for this one i do alternate where i put my clips so those don't like hit each other like that and then flip that right side up and that looks good now we're going to grab our zipper and i'm going to make sure my zipper goes to the left i'm going to put double-sided tape right along the edge of my zipper and again, this is not how the pattern has you do this. This is just how I do this one. Since the other way, I have a tendency to close up my zipper pocket and not be able to use it. Still have not figured out the best way to do that method. But this way works for me. You do what works for you. Rip. It is a zipper pocket. It does not have to be perfect. Just has to be functional. So fight with the tape. Like so. And now with the clips, this part is a little more difficult, but it's fine. We'll make it work. I like to have my zipper closed to the left. So we're going to lay that down. Center our zipper. I like to feel where my zipper tape ends and make sure I have about the same on each side, which I do. So then I'm going to flip this up, make sure I don't move it, and peel the double-sided tape off of the bottom. Once I fight with it, there we go. Dip this back down. Double check again if you need to, which I do because mine moved. <laughs> and you can remove the clips as you center your pocket on to as you center your zipper onto the lining like so i got two fingers there i got a little more than two there but it's fine once you have that set we're going to do the same for the top so peel that down take your tape off and bring this up remove your clips as you center your pocket as you center your zipper on. Like that. Then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right along the folded edge of this lining, securing your zipper into place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that set, your zipper is secure to the lining and we're good to attach the pocket. 
So flip that wrong sides down, grab your pocket piece. What we're gonna do with this is we are gonna start at the bottom and line that up with your zipper pocket facing, clipping this into place right along this edge. Once that's clipped, we're gonna stitch along this edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, securing the pocket to the zipper facing only. Make sure you move your lining out of the way. We don't wanna sew that. Okay, once you have that set, your pocket is attached to your zipper lining. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold it down, give it like a finger press, or you can iron this, it doesn't make a difference. And then we're gonna grab the bottom of the pocket panel and bring that up to meet the top of our zipper facing. Clip that into place. And then once that's set, we are again gonna bring this to the sewing machine and stitch along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, only connecting it to the lining. While we're there, we're also gonna stitch down these edges as well, securing the pocket closed. Okay, perfect. Now that we have that stitched, I started at the bottom, went up, went across, went down, securing this pocket. So now this lining pocket is fully functional. And that is the last piece that we had to assemble. Now we are on final assembly of the bag. So make sure you grab all of your pieces, your two linings and your two exteriors. With your exterior lining pieces, we need to mark the measurement for where our zipper is going to lay. You can do this by either transferring the marks from your pattern piece or by measuring them out. We're gonna do the pattern piece. So take your pattern piece and now this part is gonna be a little difficult because now we got all these pockets and webbings and everything but we got this. So take your pattern piece, and what I like to do is do it one measurement at a time. Lining up your edges, slide your piece down slightly, and where you have your zipper start line, draw your mark, slide it over, lining up the top edge, and draw your other line. Of course, mine's right and white, so I got blue, we got this. Ding like so. So you have your top marking there and your side marking there. We're gonna repeat this on the other side by flipping the pattern piece over and you can kind of see through. It's a little more difficult, but we could do it. Same thing, measure down, draw your line, bring that up, slide it over so we can draw the side line. like that so we have our four markings on this piece repeat the same for the other exterior piece once you have those marked put those to the side and grab your lining pocket panel that has the zipper push everything out of the way not important right now we're going to take our zipper find our center I am just going to draw my center on this one. I'm not going to cut it. So we're going to line that where I just fold it in half and I draw pencil uh, chalk marks on the back. And we should have the lining on the top here. Yes. So we're going to lay our zipper right side down, lining up that center and clipping into place along the top edge. You could have also done those marks on the, in the lining pieces as well that we drew on the exterior, but I'm just gonna clip. And when I put the exterior on top, we will be able to line those marks up. Now you could base this in place if you did draw your marks on the lining as well. Since I did not, I'm not going to. I'm going to grab my main exterior piece, which is the one with the pocket. 
So my exterior piece with the pocket, I'm going to flip this right side down and I am going to add the lining, the exterior to the clips, clipping right at that line as my starting. Doing the same on the other side, finding my line, clipping. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start at our drawn line, backstitch, go all the way across, stopping at our other drawn line. Once you have that set, what you're gonna do next is you are gonna pull your zipper down to where your lining is on your exterior and clip that into place. So you're gonna have the bottom edge go to that line that we have marked, clipping that into place. And we're gonna sandwich that inside the lining and the exterior. Like so, like that. So it's gonna kinda like boom down. We're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to see where our mark is, bring our zipper tape down, make sure your pulls and everything are out of your way. And then we're going to clip that into place as well. We're going to go over to where our stitching starts and coming up, kind of creating like a little box. That's what we're gonna do on both sides. All right, once you have that complete, your seams are gonna look like this, where you have these little boxes on the corners and you have a straight stitch going across the top edge. What we're gonna do now is flip the lining and the exterior wrong sides together. And we're just gonna clip this into place for right now. We are not gonna top stitch. That gets done at a later, later time. So just line up your edges and clip into place. You can also take this over to an iron and uh, press this down. I'm not gonna do that. This is just to hold this out of the way. We are going to take these clips off after we attach the other lining and exterior, but just for now to keep this out of the way and to keep everything nice and crispy crisp. And then once we have this set, we're gonna do the same for the other lining and exterior. So lay your lining right sides down. If you need to, mark your center. Find your center mark on your tape. Right here. And clip that into place. Okay, then we're going to add our lining and we have those marks. So we're going to flip this and make sure that you bend your handles and your straps and everything out of the way. You do not want to get those in any of your seams. So now we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch from clip to clip, which is where my markings are. That one was not, now it is. Which is where my markings were. Once you have that set, we're gonna repeat what we did for the other side. Move your zipper pulls into the center. Just slide them over. Slide them over. And then we're going to pull our zipper down to our marking, clipping that into place with our lining. Repeat on the other side. Marking, lining, clipping, 
bib. And we're going to stitch a box going down and across to where that lining, that line that we drew is. So go down and over, lining up with the marks that you drew. After that is complete, you should have the same stitch line that you had on the previous side where you have your two corners and your straight line. What we're going to do now is we're going to connect the lining and the exterior to each other. So grab both of your linings and pull them away from your exteriors or exteriors from your linings. And we are going to clip all of the raw edges together, bending your zipper out of the way. Okay, then for the lining bottom, we're going to leave a hole for us to turn this right side out. So make sure you leave a decent size hole to get everything through. I'm gonna kind of just go like that. And then like that. Okay, perfect. Once that's all set, we are gonna stitch along all of the clipped edges, not the corners. We're not sewing those up, but we're going edge up, across the top, down this side, across, leaving this area as a gap. And we're gonna do that at a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, making sure that we are not getting our zipper tape, any straps or anything in our seam allowance. Once that's set, your seams should look like this and make sure you reinforce that hole really well for when we turn this out. And I did forget to mention before you stitch these sides up, make sure your zipper is open enough for you to turn this right side out. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to box these corners. So you're going to take one corner, pull at the sides, and line up the seams. You can either open these seams up or you can nest them. I like to nest. So nest those into place and clip. And we're gonna go through and straighten out this side. Make sure it's nice and straight, clipping into place. Same on the other side, make sure that is nice and straight. Do the same. And now I like to box all of my corners at the same time. So I'm going to do this for the other three corners as well. And then same for the two lining corners. These are going to be easier to box than those. Once you have all four of your corners clipped up, we're gonna head over to the sewing machine and stitch at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on all four corners. Once you have that all set, we are good to turn the bag right side out. Once you have this turned right side out, make sure your zipper works and opens all the way. Same on that side. And stick your lining inside the bag. And you're gonna have that hole down at the bottom, which is where we are going to put our firm interfacing. Stick that in the bottom. If you are using purse feet, you would have to mark where the purse feet go. But since I am not using first feet, I am just sticking that in the bottom and lining that up with my corners. You could hand stitch that into place on the bottom, but since this is fusible, I am just going to iron that into place, holding that where it goes. And then I'm going to close up this bottom hole. Once I have that stuffed in there, see that's not 
that's not going down. <laughs> so we're good. We are going to stitch up this hole by pulling on the edges and clipping into place along those folded edges. And then we are going to stitch this into place, just riding right along the edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once we have that stitched, we are good to put the lining back inside of our bag, making sure that is nice and lined up. I have some threads here. We are good. Once you have your lining all inside, now we are on the final steps, which is top stitching and adding in our bag wire. So first thing you are going to want to do is you are going to want to pull your lining and make sure that it has a nice tug away from the zipper because we are going to top stitch along the zipper, along like the top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can go through and clip the lining down if that is something you would like to do. I'm just going to tug at it at the machine. So let's go and top stitch just around the zipper edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that you have that line top stitch, what we are going to do now is head back to the sewing machine and stitch a half inch down. You can go through and measure this and draw the stitch line if you would like to. I have it marked on my machine where I need to sew, so I'm just going to bring that there and stitch another top stitching a half inch down from the eighth inch stitching we just did. All right, and what those two stitches did just created the casing for us to add in our metal bag wires. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head into the lining and we are gonna seam rip the side seam in between that casing. I'm gonna start on this side. And this is how we're gonna get the wire inside the bag. If there's an easier way to do this, I would love to know what it is. So we're just going to pop out these seams, opening up that casing. I'm only going to do one. I think that's all I'm going to need. And we're going to take the bag wire and feed that into that casing that we made from the side seam. Getting it even on both sides. And now we're going to feed it into the other side as well. And there is that. You can go through and hand stitch that seam closed and the bag is finished. And the bag is done. This was such a fun bag to make. It is an intermediate level pattern, so keep that in mind when deciding if this is something that you wanna try out. The features that make it an intermediate pattern are also the features that make it really cool. So keep that in mind. The protruding pocket on the front is phenomenal, and Emmeline Bags does have an additional pattern that you can get with this that does have different options for this front pocket, as well as adding side pockets for like water bottles or things like that. The metal wires up at the top I think adds such a fantastic look to the bag and gives it such good structure for when getting into the bag because I know that's something that I have issues with is when I try to put stuff in there it likes to close but see this guy that's not closing unless you like push on it but you're not doing that. So it has such a wide opening. It is so fun to make. I highly recommend trying this pattern out. And the other really cool thing with this pattern from Emmeline Bags is it is a part of their charity patterns. I cannot say the name of the, of the charity and I don't wanna butcher it. So I'm just gonna put that down at the bottom and all of the proceeds from this pattern go completely to that charity, which I think is amazing. I love when 
pattern makers and all, any type of company really does something where all of the proceeds go toward a charity that they stand behind and they love to support. So I highly recommend getting this pattern. I'm going to have that linked in the description below. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. If you guys could comment, like, subscribe, that would be awesome. If you are interested, there will also be a link to my Patreon as well, where you'll get exclusive videos, different uh, merchandise, and you can be a part of helping me pick patterns to make each week. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.